Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an Automation Specialist with ESNE, and in this video segment we will cover adding I.O. modules and other remote devices via Ethernet IP inside Studio 5000 Logix Designer software. Then we will explore different tag types and move into the difference between tasks, programs, and routines. Before we get going, ESNE offers online training and information through YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the ESNE TV YouTube channel to view the various automation content that we have to offer. Rockwell PAC systems use Studio 5000 software to configure and integrate with many different I.O. platforms, such as local, remote, and safety I.O. Adding the ability to see the I.O. and the devices has become an important factor to get diagnostics and the control of the devices. Rockwell added an I.O. configuration folder in the controller organizer to provide a single location for all I.O., local or remote. Add-on profiles are used to add devices to the I.O. tree, but if the device does not have an AOP, then a generic Ethernet connection can be configured in most cases. Local I.O. will always be shown directly connected to the backplane of the controller. In the same backplane, you will also see the additional network adapters that are added for communications to remote devices. Any device added to a communications module is considered a node, and many controllers are limited based on memory size and Ethernet node connections. For 1769 Compact Logix, you will only see one network adapter. For 5069 Compact Logix, you can combine the ports for DLR or you can split for dual IP addresses. Then, for the 1756 Control Logix, you will see an adapter for each network card added to the chassis. When an Ethernet adapter is added, it can also contain additional I.O., which is how you get remote I.O. Remote I.O., although it is under the Ethernet adapter, uses what is called Class 1 communications. This is different than messaging or a panel view HMI because those use Class 3 communications. Class 1 communications will always take priority and it is always faster and more reliable. That is why we are able to get better speeds and diagnostics from remote I.O. as opposed to using messaging or some other Class 3 communications which will be slower. To add a module, you need to right-click on the location where you want to add the module, either the backplane or the Ethernet adapter. From there, you can select New Module, or if you are online with the new processing units, you can select Discover Module. New Module will open a catalog of all add-on profiles installed on your computer, and the Discover Module will browse the backplane of the equipment you selected for the devices connected to that equipment. When you create a new module, you will need to verify that you select the proper catalog number for the module you are adding. Once you verify the catalog number, you need to assign the module a unique name for referencing the tags of that module. Then you need to assign the proper slot number where the card is physically located. For Compact Logix, you can install an Address Reserve Module, or ARM, or you can put it at the end of the existing chassis. This replaces leaving a physical slot open in a Control Logix chassis since Compact Logix requires each card to be next to each other. The last section of the General tab is the Module Definition section. This is where you configure the series, revision, keying, connection, and data type. One setting that gets overlooked is the electronic keying. Keying can be set up for exact match, compatible module, or disabled. When set to exact match, the catalog, series, and revision number must match the EDS file from the physical hardware. This is important if you attempt to install a new or replacement component and it does not match the previously configured module. The most common and default keying type is compatible module. Compatible module will work as long as the catalog number is still the same and the series and revision do not have any known issues with the current controller firmware. 
The third option is disable, which means the controller will always attempt to connect to the device regardless of the device configuration. You will still get a connection error if the controller cannot see the device, but it will not validate or organize the data being transmitted. Disabled keying is occasionally used when interfacing with third-party equipment that does not have an AOP. All modules will have a connection and module information tab. These are status tabs to show the connection status, if the module is inhibited, and the module information. Inhibiting is a programmatic way of telling the controller to not connect to the device. This is helpful when attempting to change the I.O. firmware and a few other situations. After that, depending on the module that you added, you will have multiple tabs such as configuration, alarms, calibration, time sync, I.O. link, and a few other options. All these graphical interfaces are developed for each individual module which is why they all have their own AOP. A feature added in Studio 5000 is in version 32 is the ability to delete nested I.O. Previously, if you had a remote I.O. bank, you were required to remove all the I.O. being referenced, then each card before deleting the Ethernet node. Now, you can simply delete the adapter module, which will delete all of the individual cards connected to that adapter. When you attempt to delete the nested I.O., a pop-up warning will appear asking for confirmation since there is no way to undo the deletion if you selected the wrong adapter. Then, you will also need to verify the controller to ensure all tag references are clear, otherwise you will create errors within the program. You can easily find all the errors in the error tab at the bottom of the software. Now, we will change topics and review the various tag options within Studio 5000 Logix Designer software. Tags have two scopes, which are controller scope tags and program scope tags. The primary difference between the two is that program scope tags utilize the name of the program to create a unique name for the same local tag name. An example would be to have the same tag used multiple times, such as a tag called start. You could have a start tag in each program and organize the code based on the programs, whereas a controller scope tag that was start could not have a duplicate tag created for a separate use. This typically means the controller scope tags are more descriptive in nature and reduce duplications. Both controller and program scope tags can be accessed from external sources such as an OPC or HMI. So the driving factor is typically how you want to organize your logic. Controller tags are always used for AOP modules, user-defined tags, and produced and consumed tags. Program tags are local in nature and allow for code to be more modular. Produced and consumed tags are Rockwell's way of sharing tag information between two Logix controllers in the same way that I.O. is shared. Produced and consumed tags are class 1 communications, which means they are always synchronized based on the controller's scan time the same as the I.O. This differs from sending or receiving tag data in a message which classifies as a class 3 communications. To find the tags, you can select controller tags or local tags. That opens the tag browser that has two tabs. The monitor tab is to view current values, and the edit tab allows you to modify the tag's properties, such as the tag description or data type. Inside the tag browser, you can change the scope to see controller tags or program tags using the scope drop-down menu. You can also filter tags by typing into the filter search bar, which filters based on the tag name or description. The other filter is using the show menu, which allows you to configure different criteria such as data types, produced and consumed tags, or unused tags. Studio 5000 has four main data types, which are atomic, such as bool, dent, and reel, structures, which are timers and counters, UDTs, which are comprised of atomic types, and arrays. Arrays have an index number designated by a number in square brackets 
and the array can have one, two, or three dimensional matrices, depending on how you configure the array. Most common is a typical single column data array. When working with UDTs, if you create all the members of the UDT and later need to rename one element of the UDT, you can edit that name while online, as long as you are using version 32 or newer. This is great for creating UDTs with room to grow and labeling unused tags as spare, which can then be updated later to the tag name needed. Previously, you would need to modify the UDT offline and download to the controller, stopping the controller from executing the code. The last topic we will cover in this video segment will be the difference between tasks, programs, and routines. In Studio 5000 Logic Designer, all the code is organized into a three-tier system under the Tasks folder. The first tier of the task has three types. Each task type has its own icon to quickly identify the different types. The first type is called a continuous task, where the controller continuously scans and executes the logic in its free time. Older style controllers only had continuous tasks, and the scan time of the controller was much slower, on the order of 100 to 150 milliseconds, whereas new controllers can scan as fast as 1 millisecond. Therefore, another task type was created to ensure code was executed in a more consistent and cyclic manner. The next task type, which is also the new standard, is a periodic task. A periodic tasks are set to run at a specified time interval or period of time. This allows the code to fully execute the scan and then evaluate only after the period has elapsed. The fastest period you are allowed to configure in a task is 2 milliseconds, which is still incredibly fast for most applications. Another major difference is the periodic task will take priority over a continuous task so that it is fully scanned and execute based on its configured time. This means if you have a continuous task that is in the middle of a scan and a periodic task needs to be executed, the controller will stop scanning the continuous task, scan the periodic task, and then return to finish the continuous task. With new controllers and their ability to dedicate a single core to logic, the continuous tasks are not as detrimental, but it is still best practice to use a periodic task, unless there is a specific instance that requires faster than two millisecond scan rates. The last task type is an event task, which means the task is only executed based on some other condition or event. One common use for an event task would be an operator who can control the same equipment from two separate control stations. If the operator is at control station one, the IO associated with that station starts and stops the machinery. But they can flip a switch and move to station two if they choose and the logic will now control the equipment from the new station's I.O. There are other situations where you can use an event task, but the key factor is that the task always gets triggered, so it will not execute unless told to do so. Inside a task, you have a second tier called programs. Programs are how you can organize and modularize your code. An example would be to have a program based on an individual line or area of the machine. Programs are assigned to a task and will execute based on the task schedule. You can have multiple programs per task, but the main purpose for a program is to create an organization structure for all your code to be executed. The third tier for code execution are the routines. Routines are where the code resides and work is done. Each program must have a main routine, and from that routine, you will need to call or jump to any other routine needed in order to execute the code. The main routine is identified with a number one to visually identify which routine will always be called first. Routines do not need to execute chronologically since they always require a jump to command to be executed. Routines also provide an additional method of organizing code based on parts of the line or machine. Thanks for watching. 
As always, please contact your local es &E account manager or automation specialist for more information and answers to your questions.